Uh, we're just going to go ahead and open up in prayer real quick. Uh, so, Father, Lord, we just thank you for this magnificent day that you have provided for us, Lord. We thank you for all the moms that you have bestowed upon us, Lord Jesus, as they are a blessing from you, God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we will feel your presence today and your spirit today, God. Let it just fill this entire room, Lord, as we grow up. Pray and we worship and we glorify you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 All right. So Gracias, if you guys señor. could stand, if you are able, just to let you guys know, the altars are open. So if you guys ever feel the need to pray or dance or just sing his praise, by all means, come on forward. Hallelujah. Gloria a Jesus. For this day, gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our brains. Your presence in this place glory on our face we're looking to the sky descending like a cloud we're standing with us now lord unveil our eyes you're the reason you're the reason we're here you're the reason we're singing open up the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our brains. Again, open up the heavens, open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Sing, show us, show us, show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us. Show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens, open, open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our brains. Flowing from your heart, flowing from your heart, 
filling every part of our praise. One more time, flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We bless your name today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Santo, maravilloso eres, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Padre. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Jesus, every war he wages, he will win. Oh, I'm not backing down from any giant. Oh, I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see your victory, I'm gonna see your victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory, I'm gonna see your victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord, again. I'm going to see your victory, I'm going to see your victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm going to see your victory, I'm going to see your victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good again. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. 
you turn it for good. I'm going to see, I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see, I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Aleluya. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Aleluya. Gloria a Jesús. You 
rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through. So I could stand and sing I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave Shout your praise, our hearts will cry. 
bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. bless your name we praise you Lord we bless your beautiful name Jesus Jesus Praise of your glory, 
hardest part of the day so can we all just say Jesus 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 there is no more powerful name no more beautiful name no more wonderful name than the name of Jesus we love you God and you deserve all our praise you deserve all the praise we bless you Lord thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Can we just raise a clap? A clap to our Holy King. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, God, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You just pray that you would pour on us, Lord. Pour on us, Lord. Jesus. Hearts 
that burn with holy fear, purified faith indeed, refiner's fire, strengthen what remains. So we the church bear your light, lamp of flame, city bright, king and kingdom come is what we pray. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. A holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. 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 The redeemed prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing again. Blow and let all the redeemed prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing. We need. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. A holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. We need a fresh wind. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. A holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Prince, my Prince, my Lord, you are the one, the name that is above all names. Pour your Spirit, Lord, pour your Spirit, Lord, and overflow, and overflow. Fill our cups today. 
we believe in you there is more of you oh satisfy our thirst we thirst for you we call on you we seek you Lord we seek you Lord flow in our lives Lord. thank you for your visitation Father thank you for your visitation there's a touch of the Lord designed for your life this morning. So it is a redeemed of Jehovah God that declare the prophetic words that are being sung this morning. Hallelujah. For you are Lord and King of glory. You deserve all the majesty and the power. For it is yours, my Lord. So we lift up your name on we lift up your name high. We lift up your name high. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Jesus? For the things I can feel and the things I don't feel, but the things I believe that are happening right now in my life, and occurring because God has a magnificent move in favor of his people. God is a loving God. And love never, never gives up. Love never fails. Love always perseveres. Love serves to me as an example. Love bears it all, believes it all, bear, hopes it all, and endures it all. Love will always be all things will pass but the love of God will never never pass and that love has been poured out in our hearts amen praise be to God hallelujah can you give a hand to the king of kings and lord of lords glory 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 we magnify the name of the Lord. We welcome everyone to Centerville Assemblies of God. We thank the Lord for your life. You may be seated. And would you give God a glory, a magnifying thank you for this beautiful worship team this morning. Hallelujah. They poured out their hearts for the Lord. Amen. They've stepped out in faith to believe God. Amen. Praise be to God. We welcome all of you to Centerville Assemblies of God. We are a physical church. We're located in Centerville, Virginia. And uh, our services are every Sunday at 9 a.m. And uh, we welcome everyone by means of Facebook, online, or you're watching in the morning, evening, or whatever not time you're watching. We want to show love to you and let you know that you have a house of the Lord to come here and share with us in worship and we thank the Lord for your life for tuning in and from being here this morning praise be to the Lord hallelujah I wanted to read a scripture we're gonna follow through here um, and praise the Lord with our giving but ultimately I wanted to read a scripture that the Lord was um, sharing with me this morning and uh, if, if you if you want to if you want to dock this down for a moment, everyone's taking a moment. This is what we normally would do is take a moment to say hello to one another and to praise the Lord in the gathering of the believers. Thank you for reminding me what we're supposed to do and greet and receive everyone. I think Manuel started it all because we haven't seen him in a long time. So praise be to God. And it, it all ricocheted. And it was like a wave going all the way to the back. Amen? Amen? You know, praise God. Hey, we must be happy to be amongst the body of believers. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I thank you, the Lord for that encouragement and that desire and passion is 
It's like a, it's, it's contagious. Amen? Con those worshipers came down from up here and they started, you know, greeting and loving on everyone down in the, uh, in the sanctuary. Amen? I want to give you a scripture so you can dock it down and write it down, at least a scripture. You take it home, meditate in it. The book of Luke 1, 46 through 55, chapter 1, 46 through 55. And these are the words that were expressed by a soon-to-be mother. Soon-to-be mother. But I just want to read the scripture real quick and just highlight pre, um, briefly some things. But I want to go on quickly. And uh, I meant to do it in the worship moment, but I certainly wanted to, uh, you know, break from that so that everyone can take a moment and go to the restrooms as these worshipers have been here, up here for about an hour or more. So here's what Mary said. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the instrument of blessing that the Lord used to bear forth Jehovah's salvation, Jesus our Lord. Amen and our Savior. She said, my soul glorifies the Lord. Where well, this morning here, we want to glorify the name of the Lord with all our hearts. Amen. And my spirit rejoices in my Savior. My soul glorifies the Lord. Is there one Lord or what? One Lord, the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in my Savior. For he has been mindful of, my, of the humble state of his servant. Amen. She was declaring herself as a servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Do you know what the word blessed means? It is, if I may, in the original, it's, it's a compound word. Or if they, we may call them words, right, from the original. Well, there are two words and they're two compound words. One is the declaration or the calling out. And the other one is the logos. Logos is defined at many times as the written word of God. But let me let you know that it is a what? It is a divine declaration. Blessed. When you're saying blessed, God bless you, bless you. You're declaring a divine declaration. You're calling it out. And you're saying divinely. Let me, let, me, let me bring you even deeper. You are declaring the thoughts of God over whatever you're saying, blessed. You hear me? You're declaring the thoughts of the Father over all the things that you declare, blessed. How many are with me in what I'm saying? This is what she is declaring. Amen? Amen? The spoken plan and, and the thought of God is being declared forth, and it's of His divine nature. Amen? So that's why she is speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit, and she's declaring these oracles that only can come from the Father. Amen? It's not an enhancement of one, but the powerful word of God being released unto the many. You hear that? This is so key component because when you say these words and you look at them in the original, they're speaking about the power of deliverance to all generations. You following me? Look at, look at what the, what the um, reference refers to when they, it, it's declared. It says, I will glorify in the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what she's doing. I will glorify in the Lord and let all the afflicted hear and rejoice. That's the reference from the book of Psalms 34.2. That means when we, you, when I rejoice in the Lord and we declare these things, all the afflicted will hear and they will rejoice. Isn't that powerful? That, uh, that's what the scripture declares and affirms. Let me continue with this. For the mighty one from now and all generations will call me blessed. Hallelujah. Now you understand. Hallelujah. The carriers of the glory of the living king. Hallelujah. And now holy, I'm sorry, the mighty one has done great things for me. How many can say that? The mighty one has done great things for me. Hallelujah. The mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him 
from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. Hallelujah. I want to leave it there, but you can continue to read over that scripture. And I wanted to give it a, a bit of a life to its own in what ha her declaration was in that moment of her life. Amen. Which is one that we can also declare to know that when you say, I will, I will rejoice. I will glorify my Lord that people will be delivered as you glory in the Lord. The people that are afflicted, they will rejoice and they will be delivered. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask you to join me a couple of just seconds and be on your feet. We're going to pray over the offerings and uh, we want to welcome everyone. If you're here for the first time, the second time, hallelujah, we want to welcome you and thank the Lord for your life. Hey, can you join me and be on your feet, please? You know, all peoples that are here and if you're at home, we're going to continue to give as we have poured ourselves out in worship and we want to just praise the Lord as scripture tells us that we bring unto the Lord and he don't, we don't come empty handed to the house of God. Amen. We don't come hem, empty handed to the Lord, the Bible says, and we bring our tithings, our offerings, and we bring our, our, our givings to the Lord of Lords, first ourselves as first fruits, and then in obedience to every action that we do that pleases him. The Lord says, when you give on to him, come and give cheerfully and give according to have he's placed in your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, Father, for the opportunity, Lord, to come before you in obedience as we've acted upon your word, my Lord, within the, these days and the following days that are coming for those who already have given and are giving today. Father, I ask that your blessing and your multiplication according to your purpose and your divine, my Lord, forth calling blessing over their lives may occur, my Lord. Father, I release it, my Lord, as they release unto you in obedience to what you've called them to give according to your word. Father, we bless the gift and also the giver. In Jesus' mighty name, and all the people may say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. We thank the Lord for having you here today in such a special day. We're going to have just a brief time where we're going to share a word and then we're going to obviously release everyone to go enjoy with their beautiful family and also to we have some things for this beautiful day on Mother's Day that Miriam has put together alongside with the church. Um, so we're privileged that you've chosen this morning to be in the house of God. We, we're privileged and thankful for the Lord that you've chosen to be with us and to be with the Lord this morning, to start giving the Lord the first fruit of your day. Amen? A little bit of the announcement, okay? Um, we are reestablishing our regular services throughout all the entire um, uh, week. So we're starting, obviously, with s simple steps towards obviously fulfilling the entirety of what we used to be, be doing on a regular basis, on a weekly basis. So what am I saying with that? That our service from Sunday mornings is always going to continue at 9 a.m. We haven't changed that. We've been given the service physically at the church. With the online services are going to transition onto physically coming to the church. So we've already initiated our prayer nights on Fridays. Every Friday, for now we'll have it at 6.30. If that needs to be adjusted, it's always been at 6.30. Online was at 6 p.m. because we're doing it from home. But it is physically here at the church every Friday at 6.30 prayer nights. How many know how important it is to pray? How many know that it is important to pray? Amen. Oh my God. How many people understand the importance of prayer? It is important. Amen. It is important. We pray individually. We pray openly in public and we all pray corporately as a church. Amen. And that's biblical. One does not substitute the other or minimizes the other. We must pray collectively as one church in unity. Amen. Jesus did it with his disciples. He did it publicly and he did it individually. Hallelujah. Amen. 
so we ought to also do so according to Scripture. So every Friday, we'll have prayer nights at 6.30 here. Amen. Those prayer nights are led by our sister, our coordinator of prayer, which is amazing. We are going to initiate soon the Sunday school, what we call Sunday school. Our cafe, Sunday CAG Cafe, will be here physically at the church, okay? Um, we are still desiring for the letting of the Spirit because we are trying not to change the hour of the service. So obviously, 9 o'clock is a service. It's extremely a bit early to do uh, maybe Sunday school at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30. So, but we're thinking that it will be right after service, right after 11 o'clock, like before we had two services and between those services, then we had obviously what we call and refer to Sunday school. So the youth will be starting with their Sunday school at least 30 minutes after the service. Also, we will have the cafe and uh, that is a beautiful environment as well. We want to thank the Lord for yesterday. The youth had a fellowship. Amen. Yeah. And uh, Tyler and Gabby, which are our lead um, um, of the youth, they were here with them. And we thank the Lord for that. There's an upcoming date also that you had given me. Is that still up for that date, right? Or is that switching or changing? Yeah, okay. Thank you. It's up there? Praise God. Thank you very much. 5.30. So it's 5.30. Does it say not 5.30 up there? Okay. So 5.30. Huh? 5.30. Yeah. Why we're saying this, okay? Well, you say, I don't have any kids. Well, I don't have any children. I have any young ones. But you have a, a brother, a sister, a neighbor, you know, someone that has someone that's young, right? And uh, um, invite them. Tell them about that the Lord is, if, if we are the ones that by glorifying the Lord will cause other people to be set free, right? Mm -hmm. Then let's do so by our actions, amen? And simple things make a difference, amen? You are the carrier of the word of God. By releasing a word, you can cause a life to be transformed. I don't say you may, you might. I believe you will because the word of God, right? will never turn back void. Amen? And people are in need of salvation. So every platform that we have for every single ministry, eh, we don't call it program, every single ministry is for us to evangelize, to speak about the love of Christ. Amen? In such a time that we're living is much needed today than ever. Much time right now, it's needed more than ever. Amen? So take time to ensure that you fulfill the call of God over your life from the last words that Jesus said. Go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. An invitation will be sufficient. Amen? So the youth event, we thank the Lord for that. Thank you for being diligent and for being obedient to the Lord and for the youth that came. Also, I want to announce and let, them, let you know that the women's event happening on the 21st of May, 21st of May, the sign-up list is in the back, and uh, you'll see it right off to the right. Please sign up and invite someone, okay? And if you can't come because you are traveling, you're going to Ukraine to minister the gospel, then invite someone that they can come. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. No, their women are excited. They are, uh, you know, they're, they're all vibrant and desireful to come together, and, uh, and I'm excited for them as well. So praise be to God. A lot of mo more things, beautiful things are coming forth from the woman's ministry and such on. You got something, Robert? Men's breakfast. Men's breakfast is coming up. You put it up now. Praise God. Thank, Thank you very much. So we have the breakfast for men. It's going to be on the 14th. Amen? The 14th. And the time is 9 a.m. May 14, 9 a.m. That means that we're going to have a great breakfast, men. So again, again, Enoch, invite someone. Jeff Erkenbrack, invite someone. Gabby, oh no, not Gabby. Tyler, invite someone. Oh, Rafa, invite some of your buddies. And uh, Manuel, traite un compadre para el breakfast. Amen? And uh, so on, right? And uh, my, my, my uh, Tocayo Rodriguez, you know, I know you're local over here, but I know you're interacting with people already, and God will use you. 
Amen. Everyone that is here, every man, you know, even myself, I'm going to invite my neighbor. Uh, um, so I'm going to invite my neighbors. All right. And also uh, Elias. Invita a alguien para el evento de los hombres del desayuno. Es sábado. No te distraigas, que la bendición es grande. Amen. Okay, we are projecting a baptism. We've been talking about it. We have a list of people that have signed about it. But uh, God willing weather, <laughs> we don't want cold feet out there, right? <laughs> we would like to do it in, in a lake, you know, uh, and that's what I would like, to do it in a lake and have people baptized in a lake um, and uh, just, just do it out, outdoors, outdoors, huh? And uh, so if you have any suggestions of the location, please feel free, you know, um, and we'll go all together, you know, we'll, we'll carry on together, we'll follow each other. Uh, originally, we had about seven people that need to be baptized um, in waters, so please help me pray for that. And uh, up forthcoming, I would like it to happen in the, the last, last portion of June or the beginning of July. Because the way the weather has really, <laughs> you just don't know, right? Imagine we got it baptized yesterday. <laughs> we just had to step out in the rain and the pour, right, and, and be baptized. No, this has to be submerged, and submerge you in the water. Amen? All right. So I think uh, I've said it all but you. <laughs> Um, today, there's no cafe, uh, a CAG cafe this evening because it's Mother's Day. We want to give time to the teachers and the ones that obviously take their time. There's no cafe today at 6, 6 p.m., okay? So, so everyone be aware. Yeah, and uh, today there's no, uh, obviously, there's no, we we're announcing it for the first time for the youth. It's, there is no uh, um, Sunday school for the youth today. Okay, so we're transitioning. I'll take just about five minutes. We're transitioning from the giving platform right now. And we're transitioning immediately. Before I announced it, that was in the process, but not anymore, okay? We used to use the platform of Generush, okay? And they had been merged into the, another organization, and they don't exist anymore. So they were working on that transition while we were... Uh, learning how to obviously um, create accounts ad administratively. We are set for all that already, okay? So now it's on all of you to take this link that you see up there and to be able... We are, this link is going to be available on our website, okay? Our website, which is uh, new wine, Live New Wine, is that correct? And then, thank you. Say it again. Newwine.live. New it's right there. You see newwine.live slash giving. Even if you just do newwine.live, it'll open up in our page and you will see a, a little tab for giving. Okay? For your giving. Okay? It should be right now being posted in Facebook as a link. And it's simple and easy. Okay? Um, we will aid you and help you. You don't have to make an account to give, all right? You just go in there and you, you hit on give and follow the promptings on it. Jeff, uh, I'm sorry, Robert and, and Rafael, they've done a great job putting this together in such a way to make it easier for you. So you'll see right there as he is showing. It might be small here, but when you open it in your computer, it'll help you, okay? And then, ultimately, we want you to be obedient to the Lord and give. Amen? No one wants to hold the blessing. Amen? You know? No one wants to hold the blessing. If you hold the blessing, then you won't see the, the prophetic and the, and, the, and the promises that the Lord has declared for your life. Amen? Please be careful with that. Amen? Hallelujah. The Lord is not needing of your giving, but he is needing of your obedience to him. Amen? That he will see you grow into that obedience and the promises that he's given us. Amen? Uh, so there it is. The process is simple. If you do want to create a user account, 
It's simple as well. Just have a username. I think it's your email address for sure and your password. Make sure you just write in pen and a piece of paper your password first. So that way when you go in and you create the account, now you can save that. Either you use the notes of your phone and you put it on there and you title it appropriately, tithing or giving for Centerville Assemblies of God, my church or whatever you want to t title it on your notes. But then after that, it's simple because every time you sign in, right, you just put your email address and then if your phone saves your password, it just, you just hit go and it opens up, okay? All right, when you do uh, create a, a logon, login, it's going to ask you for a PIN number. That means you're going to create a PIN number, a four-digit PIN number, any number that you're going to remember. Again, write it down. You just put that PIN number, and every time you log in, it's going to ask you for that PIN number so it can identify second authenticity that that is you. Okay? And uh, I think I just wanted to run that by you a little bit. I already have a, a login, so I've never done it without logging in. Every time you go in or go in for the first time, or every time you go in, because it's a platform for many, many churches. Are you following me? You have to look for Centerville Assemblies of God. So you will write on the search. You will type out Centerville. You know how you write it. Centraville, English, Assemblies of God. And then it'll prompt you and start showing you the, the church, right? It'll populate. You'll know by the address, right? We're 14821, and you must know that, Lee Highway, uh, Centerville, Virginia. You click on that one, and it's, you, won't, you won't make any mistakes, trust me, because when you hit it, it's always going to ask you for each, state, each stage, it's going to ask you to confirm, you know, and then you got to hit go before you read. So you select the church, after you select the church, it's going to ask you, what do you want to do? It's going to have a drop down for tithing, and it's, it's got unique uh, terminology when it's forgiving, okay? Tithing, then it says elms, it says missions, and there's another one that is for offering, okay? So um, be sure to select the one you want, okay? Now with this platform, you cannot select the missionary that you want to give, okay? So if you want a missionary, as I, we've created a, a, um, a program, so to speak, that you adopt a missionary from the ones that are back there, or you can ask me. We have a list of missionaries. You want to select a specific missionary like we do, we have, and so many of you. Please don't stop the commitment for those who already have selected to give to a specific missionary. Amen? No matter what the situation, continue to give because God will honor that. Amen? And those missionaries need our support. Amen? Praise God. So if you have not adopted a missionary, it's only $50 a month because that's the minimum. But if you can only give $25, don't worry. Just give for missions. Give the $25. Someone else will give the other $25. But if you can and you're willing to obviously walk in faith, $50 a month for a missionary, adopt a missionary and know that you're giving unto the kingdom for the expansion of the Lord's I mean, uh, um, gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we got that clear. It's going to confirm and ask you, do you want to give to Centerville Assemblies of God the amount of such? And then you say, yes. Okay. Listen, it, everything costs in life, right? Because we have to have a platform, right? The actual system, when you put it up, Maybe next time we'll go through the process, like if we were creating an account so you can see it, or I will open my own and have them go through it and we'll view it up here. It's going to ask you if you want to cover in a little box the costs for the processing. Amen? Because we pay for those services. Do you understand as a church? It's only a dollar something. It's sometimes a dollar seventy-five, seventy-five cents, fifty cents, maybe two, three, four dollars, depending on how much you're giving. You know, I encourage you that you got to remember you're giving from what? From what you receive, your earnings, right? So then therefore is the same thing. 
You're giving from what you give, from you're giving to the Lord. You want to make sure that full amount is making it to the Lord. I encourage you to consider giving that dollar and fifty cents, dollar and twenty-five cents, those eighty cents. That'll cover the costs. Amen. That the our organization charges us for every time someone gives. Amen. So if you give $75 for your tithings, it might be $75, I mean $76.50. You get me? So that way, that money is not coming out of your tithing, right? The money that they're charging. Does that make sense? Are you with me? Can you, can you consider those things and do so in the name of the Lord? For what you do unto the Lord, it will be done unto you as well. Amen? All right, we're done with that portion. All right. If you have any questions, please, you can come to Rafael, uh-huh. Rafo, as we, I, cariñosamente, I call him. And uh, he's uh, in our sound and also uh, Robert, which is our director and coordinator, primary coordinator. They work together. Please, you can come to any of those or even myself and I'll answer any questions. I've seen that some of you already have gone into the new platform and have given. So I thank you uh, for being obedient to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? All right. We celebrating the day that the Lord is good. Amen. And his mercy endures forever. How many can say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, today's a special day for sure. As today we also in the whole nation And I know that in earth is celebrated the character of divinely character of God in the people's lives, but mostly, mostly in in woman, in women, mothers that show continuously the unconditional love of God, the unconditional love of God. Amen. Remember, I started by saying words like, you know, love, love never gives up. Is that a word of encouragement or what? Love never gives up. Never gives up. If I ask any of these youth that are here or the young ones, if they have one or two words to say to their mother, they'll probably be impressive. Amen? Of what, how much mama has done for me, for you. Mama's done a lot of things, huh? Even when we don't like it, mama's done great things for us. Amen? Hallelujah. If a recording of everything that mom has done for you, for your life, would come up, you in, in a video or flash of all the things she's done, you'd be absolutely surprised, you know? And we're humans. We are forgetful. You know, we forget things easily. But if we see it in a video from the very birthing of your life, the bearing you for nine months, hallelujah. Not only that, responding to an ordain, ordain decree of God. You know what the decree was? Maybe some of you weren't here when, we, when, I, when, I, when I read it. But the word blessed, blessed, is a divine, divine release of the Father's desire, thought, and plan. Amen? That's why Mary said those words. Huh? She said, I am blessed. There was a divine revelation being spoken that she was receiving on behalf of God. Amen? So understand, young ones, adults, whether you're in age, whether your mama has gone to be with the Lord and is no longer with you. The Bible declares that her sons will call her blessed. His, his, his hus- her husband will acknowledge her as a favored woman. Amen? A woman is not a mother by choosing. It's not, a, it's not a mother by choosing. It's a mother because she has been ordained by God to be one. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. Yeah, that's not in my, not my numbers right there. It's my paper. <laughs> I didn't write that one down. It all comes from the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning for the blessing of being in your mighty presence. Lord, Father, we acknowledge you And Father, we praise you for all the divine character that we see, Father, 
in humanity. It was given from the very formation of each and one of our lives. We see it from Genesis, my Lord, as you create it, create it to your image and likeness, my Lord. Your greatest creation, humankind. But you've poured, Father, uniquely into the lives of what a male is, a male and a female, my Lord. And you've ordained these two in the order of your kingdom to be one, my Lord, and to bring forth your greatest creation. You set the example by which your own hands, with your own hands, you crafted humanity. You refined it to perfection to your desire. And then you delegated. You delegated. You delegated to a man. Hallelujah. And then you delegate it to a woman, my Lord. And Father, today we see how you procreate through your ordained words. So blessed are thee, my Lord, that carry on the words of a king of glory. I praise you and honor you. And Father, let the words that are spoken this morning, Father, be nurturing unto the lives of those who hear. And Father, the hearers, it may be added unto them according to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow, we can seal that right there. Praise God. You feel the presence of God? I'm shaking. Woo, I've understood that everything that we need to know is in Genesis. And it all began in Genesis. It all began there. There's revelation in the depthness of of Genesis. There's revelation. I believe that as you may see a seed be planted and you care for it, and it abrupts and comes forth and it just becomes a huge, powerful tree with much fruits, hallelujah, in a process of acceleration, if you may see that and view it in your mind, so is the Word of God. You can hear one word of God, one word, one word, one word, and it just becomes alive in you, you see? And that's the power of the word, amen? And that is a promise that it will never turn back void, but it will cause what God intended, hallelujah. And it abrupts not according to your plan, your desire, your expectation, no, no, no. You have to believe it, hallelujah. And when the Lord causes it, to grow in a matter that you see it with your eyes. That is his, his prerogative. That is his, his desire. That is his power. His des- he is the sovereign one. Hallelujah. And in that process of your perseverance and believing for that fruit to come forth. Hallelujah. And to happen, if it's a seed from the word, it's going to happen. If it's a seed from the word, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. No one can stop the word of God. No one, no one. And if you grab hold of that simplicity of what I'm giving to you, that if you hold to any word, any word, hold on to it, you cling on to it, you will see it be fulfilled in your life. Whatever you're living today. Whatever you're living today. In fact, because God is a promise keeper, that's why you're here today. Okay, not just because you're standing here, now because you're alive. You have been born with a purpose. You have been breeded and brought forth in a matter that God ordained it and desired it. You are a perfect desire of God walking on this earth. You may say, well, I don't don't find that value. You're yet to understand the profoundness of what God has caused for you to be. Hmm. It is so important to understand the beginning because if we don't understand the beginning, we will never understand the reason. We will never follow through for the purpose. But God wants you to fulfill your destiny over this earth. He wants you to. If I looked into your eyes, there's nothing more powerful than you being reaffirmed. How many know what I'm talking about? We all need to be affirmed. We all need to be affirmed. You hear stories, you know, I was born in in, in a family that there were too many. And uh, I didn't get the attention that I expected. Hallelujah. God has a plan. 
I was the only child, but yet I didn't have a father and a mother. I just had one parent at one given time. And the stories may go on and on and on, but let me tell you that the Lord, Abba, Father, wants to affirm you today. And the value that you have comes from the very one that made you, created you, and caused you to be here today, here on earth. Hallelujah. So let me just remind you, I think someone needs to hear this for sure. Your identity doesn't come from the school, college that you're doing doesn't come from your job. No, it doesn't come from your husband and your wife. It doesn't come from your plans. Those are marvelous. Hallelujah. And God, God have you place those plans before him so that his plans will prevail. It, your identity doesn't come from where you live or what you have and, or what you will obtain. My God, my God. I want you to realize your identity comes from the very words that were declared in Genesis. That you were created in the image and likeness of your creator. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. You have value greater than you have yet seen. Yet seen. And today we can stand here and declare, wow, what an entrustment. We have a tremendous entrustment. This entrustment for God to create a man from the dust. Hey, I'm going to take you through this for a few, just a few seconds. He takes, he's got, a, he's got this, this, this thought, amen? God is a God of thoughts. And he's got plans. Amen. So nothing exists. And then creation starts happening because he creates it all. And then he makes it to the sixth day and he creates man. Listen to this. He takes dust. The refiner. The maker of all things. Ay, ay, ay. Let me just remind you of something. Your God's greatest creation. I'm going to say that again. Your God's greatest creation. Amen. It wasn't a tree. It won the earth. It won nothing that you see that declares. The Bible says all creation declares his divine power and nature. So that it would be undeniable that he is God Almighty. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. So that can't be a tribute to no one else. And eventually we have to end up submitting in, hum in humbleness, re recognizing the greatness of God and the power of his creation. Hallelujah. Well, I didn't make this up. You can't make this up. You got to live it. Live it to the fullness to believe it, receive it, and experience the power of God in your daily walk. Amen. Amen. But to know that you're God's greatest creation, not for you to be all um, hidey, haughty about it, or walk in altivus, or walk in, 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 in prideness, but that you may acknowledge that you have been created in the image and likeness of the God Almighty. My God. That means the character of God is all over you. Huh? You may look in the mirror. How many look at themselves in the mirror? We don't have a mirror here. Huh? And you go, I look like Pop. I look like Ma. Man, I think I got my grandfather's ears. <laughs> or you look and you say, mm, I got something of my grandmother there. Oh, I look like my sister. Ugh. <laughs> oh, I look like my brother. But down deep in the core of your character, God has given you divine nature that comes of him and is of him and only will return to him. Let me just tell you, it was the fallen, the fallen portion of it, of the sinful nature that caused for us humanity to lose clarity and, and have a relationship with God that was so openly like the one we have today with our mother and our father that we hope to have or even closer to that for sure. But God took from the dust, he created man. Have you ever seen, can you envision this, a clone? Envision this for a moment, just a clone. <clears throat> when you clone something, you make something, it's lifeless. 
Can you envision, have everyone walked in a, in a, in a, in a doctor's office or in an operating uh, practice room? They, they'll, have, they'll have like a body like, it's not a real body, but it looks like a real human. You know? Mannequin, but you know, those, it's more than a mannequin. I mean, you can touch it, it feels real and everything. You know? Just think about a clone. So God creates Adam. It's lifeless. You heard me say it, right? Because until there, until that moment, it didn't have life. It didn't have life. So look at me. Imagine, because there was no evil. So he's bare, just created by God as he came from God's creation. So there's no clothing on. There's nothing. He's clothed with what? He's clothed at that moment with humanity. You see? With flesh. Huh? He's got all the, what you have in you. Organs and you, the circular system and blood and all that. But he's lifeless. So he is there, whether it is suspended, standing, or laying, whatever you may call it, because it's God. Amen? Our mind is so, so, so restricted to God's greatest eternal creation and power. But he's just standing there. No life. And the Bible says that he, he, he blows into his nostrils. Listen to this. He's lifeless. And God blows into his nostrils a breath of life. And the Bible says he comes to life. See, Adam never had a childhood. But he walked like a child before the presence of God. Mm. Ay, ay, ay. You don't want me to go there. You don't want me to go there. It's too deep. I feel the presence of God. You see, one time we were lifeless. And although he blew life into us, something caused for humanity to deviate because it was absolutely deceived by the enemy. But today, our eyes have been opened. But I wanted to take you, before I went further, I wanted to take you for a moment to understand the delegation of authority that he's given man and the delegation of authority that he's given a woman. So what we celebrate today and every day of our lives is the power of God's creation and his divine nature that he's poured out into the instruments that today carry his glory. You carry God's glory. Yeah, you young one, you carry God's glory. The more you know God, the more you intimate with God, the more you seek the Lord, the more it, it's unrevealed to you. This is the truth that the Spirit of God is entrusted to guide you through, that it will set you free. Set you free from the ways of the world thinking, from the ways of the flesh. And God is designed it all. I want to still stay in Genesis for one moment. Because this is where everything is revealed by God. Not only in words, but the word is made alive. You hear me? The word is made alive. In fact, every word that God says in the scripture, if you believe it as Adam believed it. You see, when God commands, it comes forth. Aye. When God commands, it comes forth. Because the moment, the moment he, he spoke into him, breath of life, he came to life. Do you know words that were needed? You think that was English? Or that was Hebrew? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. God doesn't need to speak in words. He is spirit and his word is life. And it is power. And that's what Jesus said. So what he spoke into him, he breathed into him, was the life because he is spirit. So there he gave him a spirit. He was no longer, so to speak, a clone. A lifeless body. Now he had life. 
So he entrusts him, he entrusts him with all these things of all humanity, right? We know this portion. It's powerful. I may sometime just take you to some, some teachings regarding that. And then now he creates a woman to be his ideal helper, right? That's the word that is used. It's very commonly used. So this entrustment becomes what? Now they are the carriers. Did you know that uh, Adam did not have an um, uh, umbilical? Uh, is that right? Yeah. Belly button. The cord. Okay. El ombligo. <laughs> Nor the woman had. People who are curious. Obviously, what you, I want you to understand, he was not birthed out of a woman. He was created of God. So was Eve. Eve was created while he was placed asleep in the deep sleep. I, I, I like to be in deep sleeps in the Lord like that. Amen. Hallelujah, because God is doing something amazing from my innermost out. So he took a portion of that man, right, and created the woman. People ask themselves if a man is missing a rib. Have you ever counted your ribs? Seriously. If you're missing one, I have. <laughs> I was curious. I needed to count my ribs. Am I missing one? Hey, you got my rib. <laughs> she said, here. My wife said, here. <laughs> Your rib is saying, I'm here. <laughs> Praise be to God. So they are entrusted to people that God created, are entrusted. The generation multiplication from that point on. Are you hearing me? Amen. My God, my God, my God. And it was now the woman that would bear a child according to God's ordained purpose. Woman and man come together in the orderly, the way that God has ordained it. Amen? Because there's an order in God. And then she will bear much fruit. My God, what a, what a beautiful thing. Amen? Amen? So, wow. She is now... She is now, she is now entrusted with bearing God's greatest creation. Do you hear that? That's not anything. But notice this, that because God ordained it that way, without a man, you cannot bear a child. Now, that may seem common to you or something that, oh, scientifically has already been shown and how it happens and such on. But let me tell you, if God had not ordained it, it would not happen. Huh? <laughs> it would not happen. So now women carry the greatest creation of God, humanity, and it brings it forth. And the beauty of God's eternal creation is seen with our own eyes. Did you know? Take ear what I'm saying. I'm not just throwing words out there. The angels desire to experience what you're experiencing. Woo! The angels in heaven desire to experience what you experience, to understand what the power of salvation is. Huh? The sacrificial act that causes us to be birthed forth to his doing. But this is the reason why in fundamental truth of the word of God, we give thanks to the Lord. Mary, being the one that was selected to bear Jehovah's salvation, which is Jesus. Jesus means the salvation of Jehovah God. That's what Jesus, Joshua, means. Amen? Amen? And Yeshua would come forth to be the salvation, the Messiah, to all people. What salvation? The way for all humanity to have a personal relationship with God, which was broken because of sinful nature. Jesus would make it right. And Mary was chosen. For he had a plan and needed to come in the form of a human. Where? Everything was broken. 
everything was broken that God created and his plan was attempted to be taken away by the enemy because the humanity, man delegated their authority to the enemy. They subjugated themselves after they had been given the authority from the almighty God. Are you with me? That's what happened. So here comes Jesus, Jehovah's salvation to claim back. And because he has to come to earth to bear all sins, that means go through it. Bear not, o- not only my sin, but everyone's sin, all humanity. If I ask you, how do you feel when you sin? In fact, how do you feel when the Holy Spirit that's in you grieve, grieves in you because you've done something wrong? Don't feel good. This thing that just, it's like, Father, in the name of Jesus, take this away. What I, and you start going through, huh? Meditating and speaking to the Lord. Cleanse me, purify me, Father. Let me see. What have I done? Forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me. It's one, one. And we know we have sinful nature. One, imagine carrying the burden of all sin from all humanity. Ooh. Ah, that burden over your shoulders. He carried it. He chose a woman to initiate what he would become, the son of God showing up as a son of man. Being both, which is controversial for a lot of people. But he chose this woman, Mary. And the words that this woman declares that I read them um, I read them for you earlier. They're simply so, so powerful. Because she starts by declaring, hallelujah, my soul glorifies the Lord. Mm. You got to capture this one. She says, my soul, my soul. The very spirit that God had given her as he gave Adam and he's given us all breath of life. You understand that the breath of life was delegated to Adam and Eve. So every time they will come together in the order of God, breath of life will come forth and you will be alive in the womb of your mother. So even when you didn't have all your organs, even when you didn't have your lungs, hallelujah, but in the formation of God's greatest plan in the womb of your mother, he was causing for life to have become, 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 you know what becoming, right? that it will be seen before the eyes of men. So every action of every birth, of every, every baby that's being formed, it is God's, God's plan and desire being formed in that womb. And not only that, it's faith. Faith is happening. Why? Because you didn't see it. But then you see. Huh? So even in Genesis, we see the magnifying glory of God's creation that you may grow in faith. Because no man can do what happens in the womb of of, of a woman. And no woman can do what happens in her own womb. Can you agree with me on that? Who can make a heart in a womb? Who can me, who can, have you seen the treasure of a child? Even as he grows, you have to see the value of it. It's God's greatest creation. Open your eyes and see that my soul glorifies the Lord, she said, and my spirit rejoices in my Savior. When she was acknowledging that, that you got to remember that what's being said, I said it already, it's a declaration of heaven. She is just the instrument of declaring it. As she is also the instrument that's going to bear uh, the son of the living God. Mm. Mm. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices. And that's why that reference of Proverbs is so powerful in 34, 2, 3. Because it says, I will glorify in the Lord. She is glorifying in the Lord. This is what Psalm says, 34, 2. I will glorify in the Lord. And then it says, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. She was carrying the hope of glory. Amen? 
She was, that's why she was rejoicing. She was already believing. Huh? She was just told the news by the angel. But she was already believing and she started declaring these words and she was declaring her humble status, a humble place of being a servant. Hallelujah. Being a servant. To be a mom is not an easy task. But there is no distinction in terms of value before God between a mother and a father. Be careful. I've heard statements that are absolutely unbiblical. So be careful. For if we ought to take everyone at a higher esteem than ourselves, we must understand the value that God has established and distinctively the delegation of authority that God has given to man and woman that cannot be accomplished unless they're united. I hope that you hear the sound. Sometimes what you hear released from up here it's better that you take the portion or write it down and let the Spirit continue to speak into your life. You can't decipher it all at one moment here. Are you with me? Amen. God took the fragrance of a flower, the majesty of a tree, the gentleness of a morning dew, the calm and quiet sea, the beauty of a twilight hour, the laughter of a ripping of a brook, the soul of a starry night. Are you with me? A grace of a bird in flight. How many have seen a bird in flight? Hallelujah. He fashioned them, these things together, and creation came forth no other, like no other. He made a masterpiece. He made a masterpiece, and he simply called it mother. Mother. Mother is more than a stage, my people. It's a long life calling. It's a calling from God. With it, he gives a heart that loves deeply, hands that serve tiredly, tirelessly, a vision to see his blooming image and his precious ones has he entrusted to them for care. You know, you've heard me say this before in application. We've, given, we've been given everything we need to live on this earth, a godly life. Everything. Oh yeah, because God is not confused. We just haven't discovered. Eh? So that's why God doesn't want us to be entertained with the things of the world. He's got greater things in store for you. Would you look in the right path in the right direction? Would you set your eyes only on the author and maker? Would you stay steadfast on the only way, truth, and life? Because only there you'll find the life that God ordained for your life. Are you with me? Are you alive? In that path. In that path, we can see how God has caused for the attributes of God to be shown through motherhood. A mother is deep and infinite, has deep and infinite ways of manifesting comfort because you have been given everything that we need to live on this earth. Don't be dismayed. When you find yourself of lacking of something for the very thing that you believe God has ordained you to do, know that he will show you. He said, I will put my eye upon you and I will show you the way that you ought to go. Now, you believe in that promise? Now, I'll tell you, if you don't believe in the promise of a word of God, who will you believe at all? Who you will trust? I tell you, you will never miss a blessing in the Lord because my father and the father that we have gotten to know, the Abba Father, knows what you have need of in growing into knowing him, that you may understand that he's already provided it. You need to walk it, experience it, because by then you will understand the value of all that he has acquired for us in the cross of the Calvary. Have you ever been given something 
and you have not done a bit for it. It sounds like when you, you've been growing up, are you growing up? Huh? I didn't do anything of all that my parents gave me. In fact, I didn't do anything that God has done for me. So to me, for me to be in perspective clear of the value of what God has and continues to show me of what he's already acquired and given me, because I believe the moment that you came to Christ, he already gave you all of it. Aye, aye, aye. In fact, it was waiting for you at the side because you had not claimed it. But now he's already shown you, and now you're in the process of what? Of experiencing the fullness of that by faith only. Well, you can't value something you don't understand, or you have not lived it out. You hear me? You give a little child, a little child, give him $100. He's just two years. My, my grandson's only two and a half years old. We're going to wrap this up here shortly. Oh, Miriam's making sure I know. Two nine. Two years and nine months. Huh? <laughs> Get it right. Give him $50. Give him 100 bucks. Does it matter to him? No. 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 We have the ability to give value to something that has no value because we have been blessed and the blessing lives in us. We can call things forth and if they're in God's purpose, they will happen. That's why they make green money and they produce it. Who produced it? God's greatest creation. It is from God's ability to create. But if we set our eyes on the wrong things, we will go in the wrong path. You follow me? So if it doesn't have value for a child, then why would it have any value in the kingdom of God? Ooh, am I touching a little deep? Huh? We do things because we want to do them to honor God in what we do. Because of the, where God is leading us and we want his direction. So if we're working for something or doing for, uh, applying for a job, it should be for his glory. If we're going to college, it should be for his glory. Amen? If we're doing this or that, it's for his glory. For God is Jehovah Jireh and he knows what you have need of. In fact, I already told you he gave it to you. You're just in the discovery mode. But that's where faith comes in. Can you believe it? That Papa will never swear you, guide you in the wrong direction. But you will. But the world will. Huh? Did you, do you believe that you were created to have an intimate, personal, continuous walk with God as oneness? Jesus said, I pray as we are one, that they would be one with us. Oh, come on. So we go back to the fact that this has already been given, that the woman has been given attributes of God, and so have you. These attributes are for you and for the woman to fulfill, the woman in the very infinite divine plan of God. And we see it. She's a woman that comforts. Hey, the Bible says these words because the attributes of God. Are you with me? You say, wow, she, wh wh you got it. I mean, you say, man, I've seen mothers of my mother or whatever, my grandmother, she would never like that. Well, I'm going to tell you, we cannot do something. You've been given something, right? In full from God. But if you don't meet with the master who's given it to you, how will you ever understand it? Huh? How will you ever understand it? You can sit all your life and say, oh, I wasn't born for this. Oh, I wasn't born for this. You're speaking against what? The ordained divine nature of God's creation. If it comes to motherhood. Are you with me? Oh, I don't have that care. No, no, no. You have it. You just need to experience it in intimacy with the God given, the one that provides it all. And then you'll come out of there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I understand what love is. Now I understand what it is to care for someone. Now I understand what it is to be compassionate. Now I understand to die to myself that I may live for someone else. Amen. Amen. Woo! These are characters, the character of God being manifested. Well, I don't want to take you deep. 
<laughs> God, what he's done is valuable. But if those stones don't speak, I mean, if the people don't speak, the stones will. Pero ven acá. Come here for a moment. As, a mo as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Isaiah 66, 13. Why is the, the prophet declare these words of God? Because God relays already what he's already given to acknowledge that it comes from him and that if you can receive it from a human, you can certainly receive it from the provider of all. Amen. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. So when we honor a day like today, and that what is an instrument of God, know that it all comes from who deserves all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. Lord has given a mother warmth, comfort from the womb to the birth of the growth of a child in safe haven, sheltered, all orchestrated, orchestrated by God in an environment that we can was called the womb, providing unique and perfect place of comfort, warm and place of development of God's creation until birth into the comfort of hands of a mother. That pretty much says everything that happens from the conception of a child and the orderly established by God. Do you know, I'm not promoting this, right? And I, we can go through the history of how someone gets married and how about legal and all that kind of stuff. You know, God is the one that brings people together and ordains their marriage. He said it from the very word, a man shall leave his mother, uh, his mother and father, and he shall unite with his wife. You see? Amen? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the, uh, every single, every single authority has been placed by God. So we must submit to those. Okay? Don't, don't challenge God's authority. Don't, don't cut the corners. You follow me? There was a moment that marriage officially started in the legal world in terms of, of the law, right? But God established it in his kingdom before the law of man had it. You with me? So, so when, when these things happen and man and woman come together, right, and procreation happens, God has already set a safe haven for those children to be developed, for those babies to be developed, for us to be developed, and to come into this earth with a plan, purpose, and destiny of God. Don't be putting your hands on what God is doing. Woman depicts a wife, a mother, a noble character that is in Proverbs 31. We know it. It's invaluable. Huh? It's invaluable. Her, her worth is invaluable. If, if you think we see beauty in all the creation as we see God, the divine nature, to see the development of God's word in a woman, it's, it's glory. Can you take a moment in your time to think about that. Wow. The developing of that genuine divine character of God in the procreating. Procreating. Hmm. Becoming a mom is a process that depends only from God. You understand? At times we ask for things that we know, know, uh, we know not of. Amen. It, we know not of, but when you ask for something, get ready because God is getting ready to get you through the process of preparation. Are you with me? Father, I, I would like, I would like, if it's according to his will, oh yeah, he'll work on it immediately because he's putting that desire in you. Huh? Who's the only one that puts desire in us to work and to do for his good pleasure? Es el que pone el querer como el hacer por su buena voluntad. For his good pleasure. Woman is a trustworthy, desirable character that God has enrichingly placed and reached out. The husband looks at her and he trusts her. Who trusts, who trusts their children to anyone? Who entrusts their children to anyone? No. But, but 
But the man, the husband looks at her and he trusts her. Huh? And the Bible says that he, she will enrich his life. You hear that? <laughs> we know that we call the providers of the household. That's what the Bible speaks. But the Bible says that she's going to enrich the man. Do you think about money? No, 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 no. It's not about chump chain. She's going to enrich you. Enrich you. What you most needed it to be as an ideal helper. God has given it to her. Hallelujah. So you won't boast like I got it. Huh? So you won't be haughty about it. But you need of the most fragile. Hallelujah. That it can aid you in the process. Huh? And help you. Mama. Characters of God in her. She's balanced. She's got harmony. She's a supplement. Have you ever thought about a vitamin when it supplies you as a supplement? Huh? What you need? She's a supplement. She improves, develops, enhances, deepens the home. You ever heard that saying that says in the simplicity, if mama's not happy, whoo, the house is not happy. <laughs> Wholesome and good. Harma harma harmonious. Sensible and nourishing. Hallelujah. She's creative, initiative. He's, she's got mastermind solutions, huh? You think we got to figure it out, huh? We, we <laughs> My wife is the one that she got all these ideas to fix stuff around, you know? I'm telling you. Whoo! The Bible says that she's like a merchant ship. You know that our food either is produced in our land or is, is bought in ships. When that ship shows up, you know, whoo, we know it's got goods. The Bible says that she's like that merchant ship. She brings food from afar. Hallelujah. Uh, prepares breakfast and plans. Hallelujah. She inspects, evaluates, and supervises her fields, her children, her household. Uh, it's beautiful to know that a woman brings strength, brings energy, brings endurance. Hallelujah. This is all right there in the Bible. It's right there. It's all in the book of Proverbs. Compassionate. She radiates respect, determination, and self-confidence. You know why are these attributes so important? Because we can learn from them. We can learn the character of God. And we can absorb and grow from those things. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, wisdom and understanding are her right hand. My God. You know, there's beauty to the traits. There is experience in that journey that she's walking out of caring for a birth human being, her entrustment of God, the love embedded in the unity of God's create, creative doing. I'm going to ask you to be on your feet, and we're going to close here. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Gerardo, venga para acá, Hallelujah. There's so much more that we can actually sh share with you guys. It's right here, Mama. We can share with you guys. But for this reason today, we honor all mothers. And we want to pray for them today too as well. So if you're here and you're Mama, you want to come forth, we want to pray for you. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Queremos orar por ti, mamá. Queremos orar por ti. Hallelujah. Just gather right there, uh, all of you together in a semi-circle over there, right there. Semi-circle right there, you're fine. Semi-circle right there. That's right there. Semi-circle. 
right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A mother always cares. A mother always is there. A mother always prays. A mother always stays. Huh? When the going gets tough and the tough gets going, mama's always there. Huh? This, uh, we are, if you want to let uh, Robert, I don't know if she can come or we'll wait on her. When life gets tough, mama's there. When things are too much to bear, God, when you're off and away or even in your household and find yourself to be empty and without direction. She shares God's word. She shares God, God's word. She shares God's light. So bless God who made mothers. Bless God who made mothers. I want to remind you as women of God, mothers-to-be, mothers-to-be, no matter what age you are, whether you're young, in due time, God will present to you your partner and the blessing will come forth. But let me tell you that God is preparing you. Amen. By showing his divine nature, where do you find this divine nature and identity? You find it in God. You find it in God. But let me remind you what the word says. That she shares God's word with her children. There's no other place where your children will find biblically the word of God but in your mouth. The Bible says instruct them in it day and night. Day and night. Hallelujah. Day and night. Our generation is a blessed generation because we have women that have been blessed. Hallelujah. Can you take the words of Mary and declare them over your life? Can you take the words of the psalmist? and declare them over your life. You must understand that your soul glorifies in God. And by that, people are delivered, instructed, and guided into the Word of Christ. If you are sitting at the pews or standing, would you stretch your hands over these mothers would you think of your mother if she's not here also? These women represent the mothers that are here and the mothers that are not here. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Carla, can you go get Chapita, please? Run, thank you. Quick. Father, we, Father, pray that these women, Father, that are standing here and those that are far, those that did not make it here today and those that are in this neighborhood and this nation and this world. It is your gift to the world, my Lord, to procreate your greatest creation, to fulfill a plan of multiplication, to give life, my Lord, that is only abundantly found in you. But I pray, my Lord, for the minds of these women, for their Father, Lord, wombs are blessed. Their wombs are blessed. For if Sarah was able to have a child at later years, who can say they shall not be a barren woman in the house of God? But there she is blessed. For she delights in the Lord with all her heart. And Lord, Father, I say it, that their spirit may rejoice in you, my King that their spirit may rejoice in you. 
for you are the center of it all. It is you who have placed your breath of life in their womb, my Lord, that will cause forth for Lord life to be for them as they give it unto others. That it's not only a physical action, but also an impartation of eternal word of life. Life that comes from you. Father, let them be true carriers of your word. And Father, to parry on to the grandchildren and to their sons and their daughters and to, Father, their generations, my Lord, Father, that they will, Father, not only birth physical boys and girls and children, but they will also birth forth many spiritual sons and daughters, my Lord, Father. I thank you, my King, in Jesus' name. Father, let them know what is to birth forth, my Lord, spiritual sons and daughters, my Lord. Father, to pour into many that are in need, Father, to see the light that is in them, my Lord. And that, Father, they may speak the words of life. I will glory in the Lord. Let all the afflicted come and rejoice. I speak the power of Lord multiplication through their lives that whatever they touch whatever they speak for they are blessed it will be the oracles of your kingdom and your glory let it be done as we bless them today we honor them and we honor all the women for which you have made them your procreation of your greatest creation Lord we give you glory we give you honor and all the people may say amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Won't you give God an applause for the women and for the mothers? You may be seated. We have some things. Oh, right here. You may be seated. If you're over there, we're going to give some things to the women, please. We want to honor women today and give them a little love of affection. Thank you for joining us live.